Hello everyone, I'm Mirela Gavra, publisher of the Diplomat Bucharest and Automotive Today. We welcome you at today's conference dedicated to women professionals in the automotive industry. We'll be together until 11.30 and I wish you a nice dialogue today. Before getting into the topics, allow me to thank Ramona Jorubica, country managing partner KPMG Romania, who will moderate today's panel. I also want to thank you to all our partners, Platinum Partner NXP Semiconductors, Strategic Partners Partner Acarom, Gold Partner Leoni, Partner Continental Automotive, Media Partners, Automotive Today, Outsourcing Today, Financial Intelligence, Bursa, Romania Durabilă, Economistul and Club Economic. I will invite now Ms. Ramona Jorubica to introduce today's speakers and topics. Ramona, thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mirela, and uh, a warm uh, welcome everyone uh, to the third edition of uh, this event. Uh, so I'm uh, really uh, grateful to be uh, to be part of this uh, conversation today, uh, which has uh, the theme uh, "Women in uh, Automotive Industry." So we'll be this debating today about uh, uh, the involvement uh, of women in uh, workforce uh, in automotive, uh, the involvement of uh, women at leadership uh, level, uh, the challenges that uh, that they have, uh, of course, the opportunities as well. Um, and we will also covering a little bit uh, on how the industry is uh, is moving uh, going uh, forward. And uh, for all this, we have uh, one hour and uh, and a half, uh, and uh, we have a great uh, panelists today, which I will uh, briefly uh, introduce uh, before we uh, kick in uh, uh, with uh, with our conversation. So, a warm welcome to Josephine Payne, President for Auto San Craiova. Uh, good morning, Joe, and welcome. Good morning, Ramona. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Uh, a warm well, welcome to Simona Almajan, Country Managing uh, NXP Semiconductors Romania. Welcome, Simona. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, a warm welcome to Andrada uh, Verdes, Country Manager, Leoni Wireling System Romania. Welcome, Andrada. Hello. <clears throat> hello, everybody, and hello, Ramona, and thank you so much for having us. Welcome as well to Anka Perjol, plant manager Faurecia, Faurecia Vulcea. Hello, good morning, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. Good morning to Simona Bella, head of Autonomous Mobility Romania, general manager Continental. Good morning and welcome, Simona. Thank you for the invitation. Big shout out to my friends and colleagues who logged in just to see me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and good morning to Ross Clayson, uh, the operations director for VIA Cover Division. Uh, hi, Ross. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to be here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, the, the topic is uh, around uh, uh, the women's involvement uh, in automotive industry. And we all know that. Uh, this, the automotive industry um, globally uh, and in Europe has been historically dominated by, uh, by men. Uh, and before we kick in, I just want to share with you some statistics. Uh, so according to a study uh, which was made by the EU, EU Commission, women only represent 16% of the workforce uh, in, uh, in European Union. Uh, similar um, uh, data comes from uh, from Romanian from the Romanian market, which is no exception to to this trend. Uh, however, I think according uh, to a report made by the Romanian uh, Association of uh, Automobile Producers, women women represent twenty percent of the workforce uh, in Romania. And uh, of course, looking at this percentage, uh, I think um, the question uh, that uh, I was uh, thinking to start our conversation is basically uh, how to build uh, a culture where women feel encouraged uh, to pursue a career uh, in automotive, because it's it's clear that there is uh, there is room uh, to to increase these uh, these numbers. Uh, and that would be my uh, my first question. And in answering my uh, this question, I would uh, I would invite uh, uh, the, the ladies today also to reflect and to give us a little bit of their personal uh, motivation for uh, pursuing a, a career uh, in automotive industry. Uh, and I would like to start with uh, with Joe uh, on on this topic. Please, Joe. 
Thank you, Ramona. I think in terms of how do you create a culture, um, you know, this isn't about policies. You can have all the policies you like, but policies don't create culture. Culture is about people. And to create, I think what we need is for women to really feel that they belong in this industry, not that they're tolerated or not that they're encouraged, but that we belong here. Um, and I think to create that culture where people belong, you have to start by talking to you know, our current female employees, the women in the industry to understand you know, the challenges that you know, we've all faced, how they feel and what we need to do to change. Um, and you know, it's, it's about you know, bringing um, you know, our, our existing employees along and understand how we become change agents. Um, and, you know, when we make up, you know, as you just said, 16% of the workforce, it means 84% of the workforce are people who don't look like us, um, you know, and, and you can't change the culture just by 16%. It's got to be a culture change that involves everybody. So you've got to listen to the women, understand where we are, understand what needs to change, but also you have to, you um, you know, talk to all of our employees, particularly our male employees, about being allies, about, you know, being a part of this change and the benefit that having a diverse workforce brings and all of those advantages that you just, you've just outlined. You know, we need to, um, you know, really get everybody involved in this change. And we have to recognize it's a war for talent right now. And just being okay um, or accepting of women isn't going to encourage people into our industry. We've got to really shout out how diverse we are, what opportunities there are, and how exciting it is to be here. Thank you, Joe. But um, what actually motivated uh, you to pursue a career in automotive? And if that's something that you wanted since you graduated, actually? Yeah, so I, I wanted to work in automotive since I was about 13. Um, and I actually heard a talk by some female engineers from Ford, um, you know, when I was a schoolgirl, you know, and it was an outreach program and I heard those engineers and it sounded just such an exciting place to work and with such opportunities and they inspired me. And I think, you know, our role is to go out and inspire the next generation. Um, yeah, and, and start young. Because you know, people make decisions very, very early on, um, or they might not opt in, but they certainly opt out of certain industries or certain career paths. Um, Clear. So I think this is what we are trying to do with this event, uh, to inspire and to convey uh, uh, very positive and I would say realistic messages about uh, the automotive uh, industry. Um, Simona Almajan, what's your, uh, what's your view on, uh, on this topic? We, we can't hear you, Simona. Okay, so now I, sorry. So okay. Ramona, uh, everyone, um, I'm happy to talk about this subject, a change in the culture. So whenever we want to do a change in the culture, regardless that it is on quality, it is about uh, uh, new markets, if it's about uh, what it is, uh, it's, it's about employees, it's about whatever, it's a change in the culture. We need to have a clearly what do we want to change and then talk about it, similarly with what Josephine mentioned. So we need to talk about this change. We need to have, and to talk about this change would mean that we need to have a clear, a bit of planning behind and a program, how it is. And companies usually have a diversity, equality, and inclusion mm -hmm. programs. And as part of these programs are awareness sessions, first of all. There are role models which are put on the list and talk about the certain topic. There are events organized concretely for this purpose. Uh, but in order to, so this, okay, in order to promote this internally, but also we need to take care of outside and how do we recruit in the end and how do we attract in the, uh, that? And as part of this program, I see, of course, correlated with the rest of the company programs, the university program. So as part of that university program that we have, uh, here we should uh, pay attention to and have some sessions dedicated for students where we talk about the role of the, of the, of the women in this business. After all, it is uh, a business which evolves into the R&D more and more. 
uh, you see the trends, OEMs will be become technologist companies. And in our world, we don't, this is what we do in automotive. It's not specific for men. Yes, and due to our, due to the current education, that's something that any, uh, uh, women can do as well. But not only going at the university in order to, in, in order to promote this, also going into the high schools. That's a recommendation. Uh, and coming back to the culture, culture need to be embedded in the current company strategy. And in order to be successfully implemented, need to have a governance program behind, like any cult, any strategy um, um, with KPIs and so on. Uh, From my personal, yes, 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 um, yes, 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 yes. This is what I wanted to ask you, the, the personal part. Uh, I didn't. I, I so I have landed into 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 automotive business just via a transition from a business line in the current company from mobile business to automotive. So I have not picked up automotive. That was ten years ago. It just happened to be there. But now I would not leave this business. I love it. It's basically we we, we work for the latest technologies. We work for the society. We talk about we will make the green the environment better. We will we are developing. Um, uh, autonomous cars yeah, will be autonomous cars on our roads. Um, electric vehicles. Yeah, it's 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 a. It, I am absolutely proud to be part of the industry transformation. Thank you, Simona. I think uh, being part of uh, the R and D uh, business is something that it's uh, very motivating, uh, and also being part of uh, the change in society uh, is also something that uh, uh, people and women, in particular, should be aware that uh, that we can uh, we can count uh, we can count on. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Andrada. What's uh, what are your thoughts uh, on uh, on this topic? Well, let's start with the personal part, Ramona, because you asked my colleague. So, sure. um, well, I was curious. So I joined automotive because I was curious. Yeah, I never worked in automotive before. I had some experience in other field, but what I found here is not only the product, which is amazing. I'm sure all our colleagues agree that our product is amazing and it's so needed. Uh, but I found a family because, the, and this is the part which is interesting. Uh, in Leoni, the work has started long time ago to create a culture, to create an environment. We are proud to say that we have mostly women, actually. Yeah. So in Leoni, Romania, we are mostly women uh, at all levels. So across the levels, a seniority as well, engineering as well, R&D as well, quality, everything. Yeah. But what is important about that is that we give a chance. So when we say that we start from the interview, like Simona said, at the interview, we measure competencies and motivation. We don't measure gender. There will never be a measurement of gender. And yes, indeed, women have more motivation. I mean, I'm proud to say that. Uh, competencies, otherwise, we all develop. On the second thing about motivation is what do you give to the people? So we give we have ladies, just to, to give you an example, who started 20 years with us as operator on the line. They are now production managers. They went through the, the faculty with us, we support it. They went through the masters with us and they're happy to stay. And there's another point here, which is very important, creating pride. We are proud of what we do and we are extremely happy where we are. We chose to be here. So our ladies actually chose to be here. I chose to remain. Yeah, I came, I saw the product, it's wonderful, but I chose to remain for the family and because it's not enough to make something which is, let's call it cold and hard. Yeah, it's important to actually have a bit of a soul. Yeah, and it, it makes all the difference during the day, each day. And this is what we create. Of course, there's always a discussion about payment. I don't think in Romania it's such a discussion, but we understand that in our colleagues in other countries. And I think this is important comes with the equal chances. But since we started so long ago, we are already more or less there. We just work to maintain it, which is also very important. Once you get there, once you have it, don't lose it. So that's on me. Thank you so much, Andrada. So I hear curiosity as a motivating factor 
factor from uh, from your side uh, and an emphasis on uh, competence uh, rather than uh, gender uh, which i think it's uh, it's a very uh, valuable uh, and, and and true observation uh, which i also personally um, uh, support uh, support very much um, anka uh, how do you see this uh, topic I believe that everything is starting from the education. And if, I, if I'm looking in the Romania level and if I'm looking in the past and I'm looking to my mother, basically she was the single one who had access to the education or the high level of education. So basically we as a woman from the beginning, we was raised to just stay home and to cook and to be more uh, taking care of the family and so on. So I believe that to encourage this, the, this woman in the business, which is coming basically with a different style of management and that is needed now in a VUCA context, if I'm looking, I'm speaking about a democratic style and a um, participate, uh, participative style instead of having a, dem, uh, a, um, uh, a style of autocratic and direct as a man. So if I'm looking how to do it, this in, a, in our should be clearly coming as a as a strategy from the group. And it, this is this is it already because uh, according with the statistic, we see that uh, corporation and companies that are having women in a management position are coming already with better results where basically the majority are, are men. So we have to start clearly with a clear policy. And as we said, from the from the recruitment proce uh, process to encourage the woman to come and to offer them the, uh, the the correct environment in our organization, to to look also on the needs of the woman, because basically, as I said, our education was focused on the family, protect the family, uh, raising the children. So we have to give them the access uh, to, to raise the children and to do business in the same time, because we need. The, the, the abilities that the woman have, the, the way of, and the empathy that the woman have it in the business. So taking the consideration a right policy, giving them the rights to promote and an, uh, the right environment, doing a lot of even promoting the woman, uh, giving them the confidence that are the, the right people on the right position and they have really a career path in uh, a fraud because basically all the ability that the woman's having are really needed in the business. And I'm not speaking only in the automotive, in all the business. We, we need men, but now we are just looking more on the woman side because it is a lack of the ability of the women that are having in the business. So we have to start with a clear education, looking on the, on the, on the kindergarten, on the high school, looking to my experience. For sure, I was raised by my mother to just study and to do a family and to protect the family and to just have a job to survive from one day to another. But actually we should start and to educate our children now as a woman to be proud of what they, are, they can do, to be proud of the ability of the girls in the, in, the, in the schools. And after that, encourage to have a right education, to be proud of what they are doing, to be proud of the ability, not necessary to be a power, but to be sensitive, to have the ability to negotiate, to have the ability to, to be innovative and to look on, on everything because this, this we are. We are really a force, not a power, but a force that is bringing a lot of ability aside. Looking in my experience, to be honest, why I choose automotive, I choose it from the beginning. And I don't know if I choose it or was just coming after my university because I chose to be uh, an engineer. So I, I finished my, I, I finished Polytechnic and looking in what my city was offering was just offering an automotive and a big, a big uh, employer. So I choose it from the beginning and I choose to remain here. And if somebody will ask me to go in another kind of business, I will not go because I like the dynamism. I like what they are offering. <laughs> Looking in a management position, I believe by just having the curiosity, what uh, Andrada was saying, and also by feeling the, 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 family, um, uh, the, the family aside, I was just choosing to remain in the automotive and I will never change this. For sure that we have to do some compromise now because the environment is not offering us the right environments to, to perform. So I'm, I'm not regretting. I choose for sure to be more involved in my, in my career and I'm not missing the other side, but 
I didn't have the possibility to choose the other side or to test the other side because now I'm feeling complete in what I'm feeling here. So basically, this is it: right environment, right uh, policy, promote them, giving them the empowerment that uh, they are right, that the right person. And as uh, Joe was saying, also the culture is just changing through our employee. So we have to look on on the people and to empower our people and our women for sure. Thank you, Anka. I think you've summarized uh, very well uh, the fact that uh, the education system is important and also the, the right uh, policies that we should have uh, we should have in place. Uh, and it's good to hear that, uh, you know, you knew from the beginning uh, what to do. And I heard that uh, the majority of uh, the ladies in the panels uh, knew that uh, they are to pursue this, uh, this career, which means that uh, this is uh, very inspiring for uh, for the ladies uh, hearing us and not only for uh, for the ladies uh, let's put it this way because I think here we are uh, talking about uh, uh, encouraging women uh, attending uh, this uh, coming to this sector uh, but also let's not forget that we talk about uh, being competent first uh, and then uh, you know uh, talking about uh, the others uh, Simona Bella what's uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on this topic as well well, I prepared some thoughts, but now after my <laughs> colleagues spoke so extensively about it, I will try, try to bring something new. Uh, let's start with some figures. Uh, in continental Romania, in the several companies that continental has in Romania, we have 19,000 colleagues. And out of those, a third are in R&D, and out of those, a third are women. So basically, we are quite well represented in this area. And uh, going back to what we did well in order to attract them, um, I will structure my answer twofold. So uh, first of all, we offer lots and lots of domains where uh, we can get hired. And uh, if we look at the technological areas or the strategic areas that we are having, um, I will just mention sustainability, uh, autonomous mobility, which I'm representing here, if you see up in my background. Uh, smart mobility, user experience, connectivity, software architecture, safety, uh, mega factory, operational excellence, industrial solutions. So I just listed a few of the areas. So basically the message is that whatever your interest is in uh, technology, you will find a way with us. So I think this is one uh, key aspect to offer a variety of areas and uh, fields where you can influence uh, the future. Uh, this is one thing, so to find your motivation in these areas. And second, uh, we use the so-called best fit in order to hire. So in addition to having the right technical skills, knowledge, we are looking for a certain kind of person. We are looking for uh, uh, abilities. We are looking for experience and motivation. Um, regarding a, a personal example, what we did uh, several years ago when it was really hard to find some candidates, for example, in the project management area, we started the other way around. We started looking for the right person, the right attitude, the right motivation, and then we are training the technical part. So the message to all the women out there and the men, of course, who are interested is don't get discouraged if you don't have experience in the um, automotive area. Just come over, contact us, Show that you have the right attitude and uh, that you are smart and you are curious and courageous, and then we will uh, teach the rest and support you in your development. Thank you, Simona. Uh, I think it's quite um, inspiring to, um, uh, to promote uh, the automotive industry as an industry that is under continuous uh, change uh, and um, uh, I think in terms of R&D, we discussed uh, earlier, uh, there are so many uh, initiatives uh, and it's never uh, too late uh, to start uh, and it's never, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, too early to, to consider this because for sure this is a, an industry that uh, you will not get uh, bored and you will not get the chance to do the same things, but you will need to innovate uh, day by day because the exactly. industry is changing uh, itself. Um, uh, Ross, uh, last but not least, uh, what uh, would you conclude on, uh, on, on this topic? And of course, uh, share a little bit of your personal uh, example. 
Yeah, so it's um, it's always good to come last because all the intelligent ideas were already <laughs> said. <laughs> so um, what I would say, first of all, why automotive? Why, uh, what can we do to inspire women to come into the automotive world? So automotive is a very diverse um, world, I would say. So every talent can find its development in, in automotive. You have a huge possibilities from creativity, creating software, creating products, doing quality, sales, purchasing, you can name it. You, you can find uh, always a place where to make your potential growing. Um, also, automotive is having a growth mindset, and, and this is something in, in the war of talent uh, that, that everybody wants to go to. It's not always easy to go to that eh? because it's also it's a culture. It's creating a culture like some of you already said here, but the growth mindset helps you to see people as a potential, not what they are not doing, but what they can do, what they can do in the future, what they can do in five years and 10 years. Um, we don't look on the looks, eh? and so we really look to the potential. Um, and, and this is very, very important. So this is also uh, the why in, in automotive. You have other businesses that do this as well, but automotive is very, very fast, it's a lot of adrenaline, and it's also uh, triggering some of the, the characters. No? And, and on the characters and personalities, I also want to say that we see a, a shift. So all this woman here, we went to a kind of breakthrough. No? Uh, the first woman here, the, the first engineer in university, I was doing sports, I was doing a male sport, I was doing boxing, I was the first woman in boxing, first woman in, in engineering, you know, electromechanics, nobody was doing it. I had three brothers, so for me all those things were normal, so how, how can you not see me as a woman to do that? Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm smarter than one of my brothers, the other brothers, not. <laughs> but I was always saying, I can do this, why can't I? Uh, so why do people don't believe in me? Because they, they see me as, as somebody who has to make babies and look at home uh, for the things. You need this, as some men need a woman to take care of their career at home. And we are organized, we do it. So we can also take on top of it the career, you know? <laughs> so, so I say, okay, challenge me, I'll, I'll make it happen. And, and I also want to say this to all the women uh, that look, but also not only the women, also people that feel different. It's the difference that makes the change. It's your difference of background. It's your difference of, of experience. It's your difference of authenticity, which is very important to keep your authenticity. That will give the extra value to the company, to your team, uh, to their lives. And so, so this is really the added value that I see as a woman in a male team, as well as a male in a woman team. No? <laughs> so let's be very clear on that. Um, so um, it's not only changing a culture by saying, hey, we have a KPI, we, we, we want to attract women, so we want to do it, but uh, not really convinced. It's really also in the language and the way of communication. So an onboarding process is very important when you bring male and female and, and diverse people inside that you really show this is the culture that we are making. This is, you enter in this doors in this company, and this is really the culture. We, we see you as potential. We see each other as potential. We make each other grow. We are a family like like we already heard so so we will take care of each other we connect with each other we listen huh? but we also speak when we talk of uh, hiring an engineer like say 20 years ago everybody's saying yeah he needs to do even in the job district he needs to do this <laughs> no we can say she or he can do this <laughs> you know so even in, in the definition of a job it was always male so people were already setting their minds uh, unconsciously, you know, to, to a certain pattern. And, and this is really important also. Why do we put policies? Why do we put infrastructure? Huh? Because in the first companies, there was no, no dressing room for women. <laughs> there were things that now everybody sees it as, as normal. This was not happening. So the first profile that most of these ladies here, we were breakthrough. No? We were the first one. We had to show um, and work harder <laughs> to do the same results, really to convince that as a woman, we could do this. But now the road is paved, I would say. So all the women, they can really um, enter in, in a kind of infrastructure already set up, policies already recognized, uh, people seen as a potential, and take this chance as a woman, take this chance in automotive, because you really, the, the sky is the limit. Whatever your potential is, you will find a growth in, in, this, in those companies. On a personal level, okay, I. Just uh, very quickly, I have three brothers, so this is already was an inspiring. So the dolls that I received, I did not really play with it. I was uh, playing more on, on bicycle and and um, 
and football with them, you know, the, the, the typical male stuff. But also I was sent to a girls' school huh, before in, in my country is separate boys and girls. And I really felt like, why do I have to do the thing different? Uh, why do I have to uh, learn things from the home, you know, like making clothes? <laughs> why my brothers, they can do the nice stuff and technology because I was always inspired by technology. So I changed schools. I had to convince my parents, which was not so easy, but I changed schools and I went to uh, industrial science in, in secondary school, which was uh, opening a world. I saw technology, logical thinking, math uh, applied already in, in electricity and mechanics. And this was passionate. And I say like, I can discover this, this world. Why can't others, you know, we, we have to really make this open. So um, this is uh, something I take on part of the job. And eh? so we are here to, to women from uh, Foresia Porvia. We are in operations, which is not easy to see women in operations or company that believe women to, to manage the PNL, to manage all this responsibility. You know? uh, mostly we were put uh, before in, in different functions without discrediting because the other functions are very important as well. But it was like, yeah, if you want somebody on, on the steering wheel, we put a male. <laughs> okay, so now we really feel that this is changing, that people also see how important is um, the background and, and the biological uh, brain of the woman, let's say the resilience that we have, uh, the way how, how we had to manage from an underdog position. <laughs> and so, so there's a lot of qualities that really, really enforce the team. And, and I really believe of diversity, you know, not 100% women, but not 100% male, but a good mix is really what opens your mind. And every day we are learning from each other. So. That's thank a, you. Thank you yeah. so much, uh, Rose. I think uh, <clears throat> uh, I I I, um, I will point out what what you said that uh, basically it is the difference that uh, makes uh, makes uh, sense. Uh, not uh, you know encouraging percentages. Percentages are something um, on the paper uh, that we need to look at, but then we need to. Um, uh, to break those percentages and see exactly uh, how uh, we can use them uh, for the benefit uh, of uh, the business and for the benefit of the society at large. Uh, and I take this opportunity basically to encourage everyone listening to us uh, to ask questions uh, in the Q&A uh, chat. Uh, and I see already that we have uh, a question and uh, we have a question for uh, Simona Belea. Uh, and it, it is very much linked to the conversation on our first uh, topic. Uh, so Simona, the question is, did you feel welcome in a men-driven industry and what challenges did you have to overcome along these years? Yes, uh, thank you, Georgia, for the question. I actually know Georgia. She's one of my uh, friends and uh, colleagues. She's uh, also working in Continental, so basically she has the same uh, challenges. Uh, let me uh, answer directly. I never thought when I joined at that moment Simon's video, which became Continental after that, that it's a men driven industry, or at least I never, I never felt like this. Uh, yeah, I kept seeing, uh, uh, yeah, colleagues, uh, women and men, and just doing our job the best we could. So I never felt this pressure. Maybe it helped a little bit in my upbringing that uh, we had, um, how should I put it, a group of friends, of people, and we didn't have girl toys or boy toys, like <laughs> uh, boys toys, yeah, uh, like they have uh, now. Uh, so uh, it was always a, a very common approach. What challenges uh, uh, did I have? I think I had the, the usual ch challenges uh, of of, uh, yeah, uh, getting to manage the team, getting to to deliver results, trying to to <clears throat> sorry to manage my uh, my energy in the right way. So um, let's say uh, pretty common challenges. But uh, Georgia, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Thank you for joining. And uh, yeah, for success for the future. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. I think uh, uh, some of you anticipated uh, the next uh, topic, uh, which I will uh, I will introduce. And this is uh, a topic that the first we discussed about uh, having women encouraged to uh, pursue a career in automotive industry. Uh, but at some point in time in in career in in the career, it comes uh, the opportunity to jump into a management position. And we've heard uh, that uh, there are 
many studies and there are many uh, analyses uh, done that uh, companies uh, which have women uh, at boards, uh, they perform better. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the, the next topic that I would like uh, to, to delve in uh, together uh, with you. Um, and this is uh, because also the, the presence of, of women in boards uh, and in management position uh, Percentage-wise, at the level of the country, is not uh, great. Uh, I'm pleased to hear that uh, there are exceptions uh, in uh, in some of the companies uh, present here. Uh, but I think the question is uh, how to encourage women to pursue uh, um, a career uh, in a leadership posi position this time. Uh, and looking as well on your personal experience, um, what changed? Uh, in uh, day one and from day one onwards when you actually embarked into this uh, leadership uh, position. And I'm coming back to you, Joe, uh, to, uh, to this Thanks. Topic. Thanks, Ramona. So, yeah, I think, I think it is essential that we have women in leadership positions. If I look at, you know, Fort Otterzan here in, in Romania, yeah, we have 46% women. We're not quite at Andrada's level, um, where you know, the majority are women, but, uh, but we have a strong representation, um, but we don't have that same representation at all levels. So clearly along the way, you know, women are either opting out or not getting the opportunities to progress. So I think it's, uh, we have to, you know, there is certainly a number of people who self-select, who decide, you know, they don't want the stress, they don't want, you know, the hassle, they have other things going on in their lives. Um, that means they don't want to move up. And I, you know, I think it's on us to, um, to be realistic about what it means to be a senior leader in this industry. Um, but also the great benefits that it brings, both from a personal perspective and from a company perspective. You know, I get, I, you know, have a huge amount of fulfillment from the role that I do. And I think it's, it's incredibly fulfilling. And I think people sometimes miss that, um, you know, that this is, you know, like every job, it has its stresses, um, you know, but it's, uh, you know, it's exciting. I get to make a difference. Um, you know, there's so many things that I think, you know, as women, you know, it's, you know, we create, you know, this, you create something and that creativity, that innovation, um, it's really, you know, a great part of this role. So the first one is you've got to create, you know, the desire and the willingness. And the second one is you've got to, you've got to provide the opportunities. And that means, um, you know, giving uh, our female colleagues um, exactly you know, the same opportunities as the men, which means we have to address things like, you know, people who promote through, you know, people who look like me. Um, you know, that means that, you know, our male hiring managers have to be aware of that unconscious bias and we've got to prepare women to go into those roles and speak up. And that means creating opportunities to do job rotations, it means creating, you know, moving people out of you know, their comfort zone. And, you know, in, in the last uh, discussion, we talked uh, a lot about, um, you know, looking for the best fit, look for the person and you can train, um, you know, the or learn the details. And that recognition that you don't have to have 100% of what it needs to go for a job, you know, if you're the right, if you're the right fit, if you've got, you know, that ability, then go for it. So I think it's, it's about, you know, addressing the desire and then addressing the opportunities um, and being serious about it. Thank you, uh, Joe. But what were the, the challenges uh, for you? Have you encountered yeah. uh, challenges? But because we all know that this position <laughs> in leadership is very challenging, uh, uh, but also rewarding, like you, like you said. But let's also talk about the challenges. Yeah, it is, you know, and I've been in this industry, you know, a long time. I started, you know, over 30 years ago. Yeah, I remember a time where I went into a factory and there wasn't a lady's toilet, you know, things that are just, you know, impossible to imagine today. Um, 
So there have been a huge amount of changes. And, you know, it's there is the challenge of, of feeling like you belong. You know, when you're in, in a, you know, a room with, you know, where everybody else is male and you're the single female, you know, there is that issue of kind of imposter syndrome of, you know, belonging or, and of also being wanted. Um, you know, and I think the more people we bring in, um, you know, the more women who advance and, you know, we start to tip the balance and then you know, it doesn't feel like that anymore. You know, in my leadership team here, it doesn't feel like that. You know, I, I you know, often sit in meetings where, you know, there's a female majority. And I, I could never have imagined that when I started. Um, so I think, you know, for the women who are in those situations, persevere. Um, and you also, you know, you might be the only women, woman at the table, but quite frankly, everybody will know who you are. Um, you know, they might not know who those other, you know, nine men are, but they'll know who the woman is. And that brings you great opportunity and great recognition and capitalize on that, really take advantage of it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Simona Almajan, would you agree? Uh, what's your perspective on, uh, on this? <laughs> yes, so I, I'm totally with uh, Josephine on all the fronts, especially I would like to stress the giving the opportunity effect. Yeah, that's most important that we have the means, we have the triggers in the company that we give this opportunity and everyone knows that. Yeah, and it feels valued and know that we in this com in the company anything is possible. I have I have heard something which I liked. I think Ross said that the sky is the limit. Yes, so anything is possible. So this is guys, don't get out of the box. Think about what you want. If you want that, talk to your lead. You have the one-to-ones. Speak out your mind. If you want to be a leader go ahead with it, you will be supported. And we in the company, what do we do? In my case, for example, I am part of an R&D organization, more concretely, we develop software. We have, we are somewhere at 26%. So given the fact that it's software, it's not very big. Uh, and we are having all this effort still, it can be better. Um, in, in my particular case, I have uh, four. Yeah, I have four women in my direct reports, both all of them are leaders in Romania and in other countries. And I'm constantly discussing and, uh, and uh, helping them to want more. I think also there is this aspect of ambitions of wanting more. And as long as you want, yeah, you want better to be better and better and to get higher and higher, that's possible. So you need to, you need to, uh, there is need, a desire is needed and also the opportunity. Yeah. Opportunity, I think opportunities is, is possible, mention rotations or advancement in the career path. And companies provide the same career development programs across the company. There is absolutely no distinction. And what we have as well, and also in NXP, and also what other companies have some development programs for women specifically. We have one from uh, which we have recently introduced. Uh, it's a um, kind of a 360 approach for uh, developing and advancing uh, women, women on the leadership positions. And here uh, it's a six month program, for example, and a uh, six month program. And there are some, several topics from, uh, from the perspective of sharing the story. So walking the talk in the end, uh, communicating with confidence and so on. Uh, but very important is yeah. openness. Yeah. openness and direct communication between, between uh, the colleagues. Yeah. How was for you personally? What changed for you personally when uh, you step in, in into the management position? Simona? This is what I wanted. So I knew exactly what I wanted. I knew from the beginning, from the from the end of the university. For me, it was a very very big step because I had visibility. I was there in order to and would provided with the opportunity to change things, to speak up, to come with ideas, to be heard. So for me, it was absolutely important. And I am telling my story to, to everyone. And I feel very proud of that. And I am happy at the end of the day, even if at the end of the week, I'm super, super tired. You know, these challenges with the work-life balance, I have two kids as well, so not, not, not easy. But I am really, really happy about that. That's what I wanted. Thank you, Simona. Uh, Andrada, what, 
would you uh, complement uh, to to this uh, conversation? Well, first of all, Ramona, just to clarify what Joe said, why I'm happy and you know fortunate. We are fortunate because we have 70, more than 70% women. So just to be clear, Leoni, Romania and 12,000 employees, we have 70 over percent women. Out of those women, more than 50%, actually towards 60, are managers. Yeah, and the country management, so basically there are 10 people managing this 12,000 and the 10 plants we have, it's 50-50 men and women. So this yes makes us fortunate. But what does it bring us? It brings us diversity of ideas. It brings us balance. And very important, what I found and I really like, um, it brings empathy because it's important, especially in customer relationship and especially actually stakeholders relationship. It brings the human element. Yeah. So we found that we can actually capitalize much more on that um separate and let's say to complement um as i said it's not enough to have it you have to keep it maintain it the the inclusive environment which means we have development programs we have calibration we call it i think everybody has calibration but for us it's actually quite fair so it's a fairness of calibration everybody gets a chance to move forward as long as joe as joe said they have the motivation they really want it if they want it they can go forward. And there will not be a discussion about your post not being fair because calibration means everybody gets a chance to a panel of people evaluating. And what else we, we promote very much and I personally promote is freedom of ideas. Meaning there is not one boss who's in front and there's a team behind which nobody knows. Our company doesn't stand in one person or one woman or one man. It stands in the team, you know, and uh, because Ross gave example of, of, let's call it male driven sport. It's like the football. It doesn't matter who's the captain. It matters who takes the team forward. And we have the chance to have, a, let's call it a balance. And we like to keep it. Now, what do we do further than that? Actually putting words to action. Yes, we do have the, the university programs, the internship programs for everybody but especially for our own employees. So we go with them. It's like a ride along. But uh, starting two years ago, we actually developed a program with the high schools because you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful, but we are in the part where let's call it, we have a side of engineering, of course, why develop, but we also need basic things, very important things like technicians, electri electricians, electromechanics, autom automatization, real people who are on the lines, and we are creating an environment for that. And it's not only men, you'd be surprised. I mean, yes, we have lady mechanics and coming back on operations. We have our, I have to say, I'm proud of that. The best segment leaders, or let's say a bit more than team leaders on our production facility are women. Yeah, And they are known, I mean, it doesn't matter who's the production manager, the ladies are known outside by the customer. They are extremely competent extremely reliable, and we are proud of them. And what else is important with, I mean, of course we have discipline, but we have a personal relationship. Relationship That means if I'm going on the production line, everybody knows who I am by first name. We talk to ourselves by first name. We have the safety of expressing our ideas. This is very important. Safety of expressing ideas. You know, you're allowed to have your own thoughts your own development, your own desires. And if you have a fear, let's share it. Yeah. If you have something which is doubtful, which I don't know, including the part of treatment, by the way, because yes, the world is wonderful where I am. I mean, I really have to thank my colleagues for that. I would never leave, as Anka said, I would never leave. It's, it's really a wonderful place. And we do have a family. But I have to say, in my experience, like some years ago, I... I also was not, I was not in a happy position. Yeah. So by learning from that experience, I'm striving to bring an environment in which ladies can feel safe to say what's wrong. Not only to think about driving crazily to development without actually feeling anything. 
yeah, because it's important. And also about knowing what you want. Sometimes maybe we need a bit of, um, let's say a defining moment or a defining person or a mentor. The person who gives you a chance or gives you clarity, we offer that as well, internally and externally. And because I believe and we believe we have quite, quite a good place to be, what we also encourage is to show others. It's extremely important to show because otherwise you're living in your own ecosystem, which is not enough. Otherwise the world is different. So we're making a step change toward making a difference and showing others what we have. Thank you, Adranta. I think um, merely the fact that uh, we are having this conversation now uh, and there are a lot of people who are listening to us, uh, it's one of the ways uh, of communicating uh, and speaking uh, very openly uh, about, uh, about, uh, about this topic. Uh, so, Anka, uh, how, how, what, what would you say uh, to us about uh, this topic? So, with so many ideas coming and basically so much reality before me on my colleagues and uh, looking, at, uh, lo looking in our experience and also, as Andrada was saying, we are also having more than 50% women and looking on the total employee, at least in my plant, I have more than 60% women and in the management position, I'm nearly to 50. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that by bringing me in a plant manager position, let's say as a woman, I'm also trying and uh, for sure we are succeeding to change a little bit the leadership style and working more with the empathy and working more with the force and not with the power, which is bringing a little bit more confidence in the woman. Because as I said, from the education and from the from from when I was child, you know, we are just used to seeing uh, and to look in the business perspective than everybody males using the power, using you know the 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 the, the, the ability of the guys or, or the men. And now we are coming and we are we, we are on the process to change this and to look more and bringing a leadership style, looking more on the force and looking more on the strongness, which is not only power because you are a man and you have ability, physical ability to change the world, but changing with your mind, with your sensitivity, with, with your ability to be emphatic, as Andrada was saying. Looking in my career, uh, I don't know how happened to be in a management position by just being curious and uh, by just not being uh, feared to experiment this because my promotion was just coming from one day to another. Uh, for sure, having the possibility to, to, to gain the expertise uh, in a training process, in an onboarding process, because now know how you can find it everywhere. So only to be curious and motivate to take it. And uh, after that, from one day to another was just, hey, are you looking to do this position because we are missing some? So I took the position of a production manager leading 1000 employees. And basically was not doing this by power and looking, look how power I am by, by just listening, having the empathy and to understand exactly what is missing to my employee to be happy and to be, to be integrated and uh, uh, building the connection. And I think that this was important. So uh, giving them the feeling that, and not only the feeling, but bring, building the team and to, 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 to show to them that we are in the same situation. So if it's bad or if it's good, we are all together and we are a team and we are growing as a team, was just giving me the success to go forward. And after that, from a production manager, I was going in a logistic position. And basically that was for me a little bit interesting. And I realized that I'm a woman in a men's world, uh, world because logistic manager usually are our guy. So it was for me the first contact with outside and with OM and so on and all the time in the meetings with the, with the guys. And for sure that at the beginning all the time was kind of jokes, be careful the woman connected. <laughs> but after a period of time, let's say going in front of them with facts and figures and showing that I do not have to yell in a meeting and I do not have to do to abuse my ability that I'm more power than you, but uh, look on the facts and figures, look on the data and having the ability to and analyze really well the data and to, to connect the data and to see and to, to show them that I'm having the empathy and I understand your situation. But on the other hand, look on the predictability side and working a little bit with more calm and for sure using my 
ability as a woman a little bit and to bring more peace in the meeting was more constructive. And at the end, I was really see as a manager, not as a woman or as a man. And I start to be more and more proud of me. And this was giving me the confidence for sure. And I was not hesitating anymore to go further and further and after that to arrive in a plan manager position. So for me, I think that the key is to give them the confidence to the woman that are perfect as there are. So the woman doesn't have to be power. They the woman have to be strong. And we are strong because basically we are cooking, we are ironing, we are doing the laundry. But on the other hand, we are understanding very well the numbers. We are having the empathy. We are rising right the children. We are taking care. We are giving them the confidence that are protected because at the end we are as a woman protecting the children when they are sick, when they have to be educated, when they have to go to when they have to go further. And this we have to do with our women and with our employees, not only with the women. So to give the confidence and to make the, the ladies and the women believe that are strong because from the education and I'm coming back on the education side, that did, they didn't have this empowerment from the from the from the parents. So this is it, giving the empowerment and the confidence. And after that, for sure, to give them the opportunities. But if you are giving the opportunity and the woman doesn't trust in themselves that they can do this, they will not apply. So we have to force. And I believe that to force somebody to go in a position, it is the worst case scenario. So you can encourage, but don't put somebody by force because it's just a woman. Just, just develop it, give the, the confidence that are really good, are really strong, even if are not a man. And after that, we'll, we'll just be more women in a management team. They will be more comfortable, feeling comfortable, and just that they will just feeling the, go on the path. Yes, yeah, so indeed, you, you rightly said that uh, it's about uh, giving uh, the opportunity and giving the empowerment on one hand. And on the other hand, uh, all these programs, uh, starting from internship uh, and uh, ending with mentoring uh, programs, uh, who are helping building this trust uh, in the in the strengths, be it uh, you know being playing on the caring uh, skills, uh, on the communication skills, on the empathy skills, and so on, are uh, are uh, important. Uh, Simona Bella, um, your thoughts on this? I have some thoughts on this. Uh, everything starts with the leaders. And we as leaders and any other company leaders uh, must be really careful in promoting a culture of equality and of inclusion. Uh, of course, there are lots of things to say about equality and inclusion. I would um, uh, try to just uh, give an insight in what we did in order to encourage women uh, and any other who felt uh, uh, they belong in the manager's uh, level to step up and claim this uh, position. So uh, we support employees. We support employees by offering them a sense of belonging, by hearing the voice, by, by making them uh, feel valued. So our role as leaders to, is to indeed uh, promote an environment of inclusion. And if we promote such a healthy culture, women will feel empowered to step up and take a leadership uh, role. And let's not forget about uh, the other uh, way of development, which is in the technical area. So we, you can advance as a manager, you can advance as an expert in a field. And we have multiple examples of women who are experts, highly valued experts in their area, going to international conferences, presenting papers, um, going also in collaboration with universities, uh, defending PhD theses, and so on. So basically, sky is the limit again. <laughs> I really like this phrase, uh, but in the right company culture. Um, going to the second question, what changed for me when I became a leader? Um, actually, I had the feeling that I finally found my place. Um, <laughs> I somehow was uh, at some point uh, critical of some uh, bosses that I had, and I felt that I couldn't do better. 
I started to, to read a lot in the area, to uh, choose some books and uh, read and try to find exactly what fits me. And when I finally took over, uh, I felt that, uh, again, I found my place and that I was uh, doing a good job. Thank you, Simona. So basically what worked for you was um, uh, self-learning uh, and uh, discovering, uh, discovering uh, a lot, uh, looking uh, at yeah. models uh, uh, around you. Uh, and also on top of the culture uh, within the company, that was basically uh, a great uh, fit uh, for, uh, for you. Uh, thank you yes. so much for sharing. Um, Thank you. Ross, uh, what would you conclude basically uh, on, uh, on this uh, subject? And of course, uh, what's your personal uh, experience uh, since uh, you took a uh, leadership uh, role? So um, again, a uh, lot of things are said. So what I would really make emphasis is on the word confidence. So be confident and give confidence. So as a company, we have to give confidence, confidence to the people, no? to all uh, diverse people. And this is by example, uh, the way how he speaks, but also what we do, above all what we do. And having women in a position already is making it true. No? So it's, it's easier for the women who enter that they know that it's possible because they see already the examples. No? Um, also for the women who are uh, entering in a male environment or less woman friendly environment, you have to adapt a little bit the style, you know, so it's more a breakthrough profile, it's, it's, it's different, eh? it's, but always trust on your authenticity. It's really the authenticity that brings the added value. So what is the added value of one female in a male environment? Is the difference that you make. It's being different. It's your background. It's it's what you have lived as a woman and the way how you as a woman see the things. No, and and this is really the strength. So being a woman in a woman environment is also a strength. But it's 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 a different um, approach that that you have than in a team. And then you will also look for uh, the different hats that you can put. So it really. I think the in the future, the, the real leaders are the ones that are stepping out of their ego, stepping out of their comfort zone and look for different people than they are themselves. And this was the biggest challenge, I think, for the male that took us <laughs> in the position that they, they had to go out of their comfort zone and take somebody who's not looking uh, like the most of the people of the team, not as, as their self. So if you want to trust somebody, it's always easier to trust somebody who looks like you. And that it's from the same background. It's easier because communication goes easy from the start. But it's not at the end what brings the added value. Huh? So I would say to all the, the persons that are looking for personal and, and looking for growth in their company, step out of your comfort zone. Look for differences. Look for the potential of the difference that you can add to your team. Huh? And for the, the woman on, on this um, event, be confident. Uh, we all go through... Uh, uh, moments of not uh, not being sure of yourself you go for a position you're the only woman or you're new somewhere and you know you're not feeling comfortable and you're not not com you know you can do it inside but some something is always holding your back and then you go to stress and maybe i can do it maybe you don't no just go for it go for it and you will learn it on the job really go for it you have believe in yourself and when you believe in yourself you can also convince other people to believe in you and so this is uh, what I would give. What uh, changed for me as a leader, and a little bit like Simona, I also, I saw my um, my bosses and I say like, I, I can do this. This should have another approach. You you don't see that you hurt this person. You will have, uh, you will need like months to get the trust of the person back. Don't you see that? So I say, I want to do this. And and every time I, I step up, I want to go higher and higher. And I think I can, I can do more, but also I can add more value to the company. I really believe in being authentic, um, having the experience that you have from another point of view, you can really add a lot of value. You can add more value than you believe yourself. Uh, so that's what I would recommend. Thank you, Ross. Uh, we also have a question uh, in the chat, uh, so uh, and I will address it uh, to you. Um, the, the question goes like that. Did you ever feel that you had to work harder to be seen same as a man in the same position? Well, again, when you are in a breakthrough phase uh, where you're new, I think whatever your background or your differences, 
you need to overcome the difference to have the trust of the person. So on top of doing your normal work, you also have to work a lot on the connection to convince uh, that, the, that the perception is changing, no? Because the, the most difficult part of changing in, in humans is perception. When they have a perception of you as a woman, it's difficult to overcome that, but it's other possible. So yeah, sometimes you have to convince. And I would just not say work harder, but convince. Put effort in making the connection in really making the, the thing that you have uh, in common with the person, with your boss or with your team, to say like, I understand you, I'm with you. And this is how I can bring the value to you. Thank you, Rose. Um, I will uh, I will challenge uh, a bit more uh, this uh, this conversation, um, and I will go uh, towards uh, managing uh, this uh, balance between uh, personal and private uh, life because uh, uh, the pandemic uh, when the pandemic kicked in, uh, we are uh, we were all uh, had to change our uh, our uh, way of working, and not only us, uh, our employees as well. Um, so if we look around, uh, we hear uh, that there is really a challenge to uh, to to strike for a for a balance. Um, and I think it's important uh, for us uh, as well to share uh, how we manage to do that. Uh, but it's important for uh, the ones uh, who are uh, listening uh, to us uh, to learn from you. Uh, what are your tricks? How, how, what are your advices? How do you manage to keep this, uh, this uh, balance? Uh, and I'm, again, I'm, uh, I'm coming back to you, Joe. So, um, so how, do, how do I manage the balance? Um, I think the first thing is to have a really supportive network around me of friends, of family, of people who will, um, you know, kind of work together to, to support each other. I think that's that's critical. Um, and the second thing is is about managing energy, um, and you know, for everybody, it's different. Uh, different. Uh, Joe, you switch off your. Uh, ah, can you can you hear yes, me? Yes, okay? now, now it's right, okay. Yes, you. yes, the energy um, part you were. Yeah. So I was saying, yeah, for for me, it's um, managing energy. And for everybody, it's different. Um, you know, for me, I'm, you know, I'm happy to, to work very long hours during the week. Um, at weekends, I take that time to, to recharge um, and to, you know, I, I avoid reading emails. You know, I have a blackout period where I don't read emails. I'm available for emergencies, but I have that time where I take time for me. I get out into nature, I get fresh air, I go out on my bicycle or I go out into the mountains or walk around a new city and take that time to, to recharge, to balance my energy and then come back on a Monday morning refreshed, clear and, and ready to go. Um, and so I think that's, you know, that's really important, understanding what works for you and how you can, how you can have that energy. Um, and then, you know, the final one is, is kind of an interesting one. It's about commitment. You know, you can't do this unless you really want to do it and you're committed to do it. And, and part of my commitment is to be authentic. Yeah, I don't try and be somebody else. You know, I don't have a, a personal Joe and a work Joe. You know, I'm me, I'm, you know, I'm me. And, and that's part of my commitment to doing this, um, is I can only do it by being authentic, bringing my whole self to work, the good bits, the bad bits, um, but all of me. And that's who my team sees, you know, that's who my family sees, and they intermingle. I talk about my grandkids at work, but I talk about my work to my grandkids. Um, you know, and I think that's, that's really, really important. And so to me, they're the three things, you know, network, balancing energy, and a commitment. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Simona, uh, how you manage to balance uh, uh, this topic? So uh, what is this balance in the end? Because uh, there is no 
eight hours, it doesn't mean that you have a balance at work as long as you work eight hours, but in those eight hours, you really struggle with what you do and you basically you are done at the end of those eight hours or could be four hours, yeah. The balance is where you feel comfortable with it. In my personal example, I am okay to work longer. I am okay to work 10, 12 hours even during the week, as long as I enjoy it and I am happy about it. Yes, and of course, the other part of the family, it should be managed, yeah, remotely or somehow, but uh, important is that I myself am happy about that. And that's speaking of energy, that's related to where, where is energy coming? That's exactly where, where energy comes from the people around, comes from the topics, comes from the result, comes from enjoying the actual work. Um, yes, supporting network family, that's very important as well. But uh, yeah, in my case, pretty simple. I have two young kids. They that's what they have seen in the house. <laughs> they have not seen something else, so they, 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 they understand. And whenever I'm at work or during travels, if we are not face-to-face, -face, I'm trying to keep the connection on WhatsApp and talk regularly. So this kind of simple thing. And as Joe mentioned, I'm trying, trying to have the weekend for myself and spend the quality time with my family, not just quantitative time, because we can be in the house for two days and everyone does what something else. But important is if there is one day and not to do it in the weekend with the family to do something together, all together. Yeah. So I think this story, yes, this story with the, the story with the balance in the end is where is the balance and the balance is in a different places for each of us and to, to be aware of it and to adjust it when you feel that it's not going into the right direction. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Simona. Uh, Andrada? Well, Ramona, this is one of the most difficult questions. I know. The most, you know, paramount answer. So, of course, luckily for us, we're different. Yeah. What works for me doesn't work for, you know, Simona or Joe and so on. But uh, I would point out on the first thing Joe said, it's a commitment. So we chose to do this. Yeah. We, we fully understood what does it mean to, to do this job, whichever one of us chose. For me personally, I commute. I commute every week, just to give you an example how far I committed. So I commute minimum 3.2 hours to six hours commute, yeah? So, but I do this because I feel, I feel nobody's requiring me. I feel that if I'm not there where the action is, you know, it's just going to take longer. And we're operations, you know, at the end of the day. So we're manufacturing plants. So it's a commitment thing. It gives me energy because I'm there. I know why I wake up in the morning. I have a purpose. It's extremely important to me. Yeah, Not just to waste the time. I have a purpose. I know what I want to do. And at the end of the day, at least in my opinion, of course, subjectively, again, I've done something good. So that gives me energy. And I've been told even last evening, I was told by a colleague from Quality, I have too much energy. Actually, I'm looking for some more. But, you know, I'm feeling like, you know, he told me and I was totally down and I, it's interesting how people perceive you. So they perceive me. I mean, Joe, we had the, the pleasure to meet face to face. I don't know how she perceived me, but apparently I'm a very energetic person and I drive my energy from mm, the result of what I do. Now in the part of the personal life, I'm fortunate. I'm extremely fortunate. Maybe the ladies here are also... I have a partner who understands he also has a quite developing career. We have activities which we do together and you're going to ask, how do you do activities? You're not tired. Apparently activities give you energy. Yeah. So we have this common passion in biodiversity. So we go up the mountain, we do observation, protect animals, protect forest, you know, that sort of thing. Totally environment uh, involved. And that gives the extra energy and the deconnection versus your Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday job, yeah? And it gives you the extra air and power for Monday, yeah? And uh, to be honest, we do things, I'm, I mean, our children are big, <laughs> quite big. So they, they're really free now. So we, we actually take good pride in investing in the children around us, yeah? So that also gives you energy. We have a lot of activities privately, 
supporting the, cho the children community in our area. So this is how we balance. Of course, you'd say that that gets you more tired. It doesn't. It's about what makes you tick. Yeah. So each of us at the end of the day should find what makes you tick, what makes you happy. Acknowledge it, embrace it, own it. And then you have balance. And if not, at least you're going to have inner joy. Yeah. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Andrada. So it's about um, finding ways uh, to search for uh, this energy, to fill in uh, yourself with, uh, with energy. Uh, on one hand, uh, embrace looking at your passions uh, and also looking at the communities uh, around uh, us. Yes. Uh, so I think this is also important. Uh, Anka, uh, what works for you? Uh, you have your mic uh, off. Do you hear me now? Yes. So I, I'm similar with the women from this conference. Obviously, we are in the management position, so I believe that we are having kind of similar things. So I think that, and as you said, balanced life means to be balanced inside. And to be balanced inside, this means that you are happy with the choose that you are doing. So obviously, I'm also deciding how many hours I'm staying at the office and how many hours I'm working. If I'm working at, in the office, if I'm working outside, important is to, to, to just have a um, quality, uh, quality, uh, quality in, in the work and not necessary quantity in the work. So for this reason, from my side, and this is the message also that I'm giving to, to organization and when, when we are chatting and so on, I'm just saying, if you want to put a rule that at five o'clock everybody's going home, I will put it. But at the end, we have to, to manage ourselves because to manage people we have and to manage business, we have to manage ourselves. And this means that all of us, we should understand what we are doing, what is doing us happy. So for me, as a balanced life, I can work 10, 12, 14 hours. And as, as Andrada is saying, and I think that it's just a coincidence. Yesterday, I was in a dinner, uh, at the, uh, on a dinner with a part of my team and uh, part of the division. We did a workshop here. And um, a lady from my team was asking, Anka, I am looking to you and I know you more than two years. And basically, I cannot understand from where are you taking so much energy because I'm really all the time fresh at work. Doesn't matter how many hours I'm working. And I was just saying to, to her that I believe that it's, it is really important that I love what I'm doing. And this means that it's bringing me happiness, it's bringing me energy, it's bringing me motivation to go forward. And I believe that this is really, really important. How we are taking, uh, for sure, in a personal life. And uh, me, me personally, I, I never thought when somebody was saying that in a personal life, I'm doing this. I never thought that it is you professionally and you personally, because you are you. So as you are home, you are also in the business and at work. And basically, I think that this is the, the force of the woman that we are really bringing us uh, as an authentic person at work. And we are bringing the feeling of the family and uh, really important it in, let's say, outside of the organization to have the right person near to you. What means right person? It is deciding everybody. Me personally, I have a man who is really sustaining me, even if I'm not married. So basically, we are really similar, or on some side, we are just completing one within, uh, with, uh, with each other. But if you really have the support and the confidence that you are near to the right person, let's say outside of the organization, you are happy outside. And you are, when you are coming inside and you are doing the, the things that you love, with the confidence and you see the right results, you are happy inside. What means balanced life? Just be happy, choose your, your balanced life. <laughs> and after that, do your employee happy. And they will just have, and they will live, let's say in a balanced life. Thank you, thank you, Anka. Uh, Simona, if you can also share with us, uh, but I also have uh, another uh, challenge for you because there is another question in, in the chat, uh, which I think kind of links uh, to also to what you said earlier. What specific measures would you take, did you take to encourage women to join uh, your, uh, your company? So you have uh, two topics uh, to cover. I have two topics to cover. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Um, 
In uh, addition to what uh, I already mentioned, I wanted to refer also to programs um, regarding collaboration with universities. Uh, that means internships uh, where colleagues, students from universities come and work with us. So they have also uh, practical stages and also collaborations with high schools. So we all, all have frequent visits of high school students who come and see our environment, see all the activities that we are having. And why is this uh, dedicated to women, you may ask? Uh, because they see already that we have a nice mix. We have a nice mixture of uh, women and men. So uh, they somehow join naturally then the company because they see that it's a welcoming environment for everyone. This is one of the concrete measures that we are doing. And we are doing this on a permanent, uh, permanent way. Uh, and it's uh, bringing in good results. Uh, now, uh, going back to the question, uh, I was really thinking uh, what to bring new. And please, uh, the ones who are listening, write down what I'm, go I'm uh, about to tell you. So I was, <laughs> I was uh, this week uh, in a program um, uh, with a company and we had a speaker, a very interesting person, uh, from a university in Paris. Uh, she's a so-called digital anthropologist. And we were discussing about burnout. And we hear this word a lot. Uh, but she said, um, burnout might be identified by uh, seeing these three steps. One is when uh, you feel really tired and exhausted. Second is when you become uncooperative. So you stop uh, wanting to work with the others. And third, and the most insidious effect, is when you start to doubt yourself. And I think this is a very simple model, of course. Maybe there are some other models. But this is a, a model that especially resonated with me because I have seen these steps in myself at some point, And I have seen these steps in some of the colleagues. And that's why it's important to detect these phases and to not let mm -hmm. us uh, go to the third phase with doubting yourself, especially in a leadership position. And uh, regarding what kind of technique do I apply? I started to believe, especially in the later years, in the uh, power of boundaries. We sometimes have uh, um, the intention of putting ourselves out there more than 100%. And this might work for some time, but it's detrimental to our long-term development. We must uh, keep boundaries. We must make these boundaries clear. And by doing this, we will then be able to save enough energy to recharge, to reflect, and to learn. So it's never a good idea to go more than 100% out there because um, this job is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And we need to be able to still be working with others, to still be uh, not doubting our decisions, so going back to the model, and to be high performers. So please, uh, those who are listening to this, uh, take care of yourself, put yourself first, step, uh, set boundaries, no matter if it's colleagues, projects, or bosses, because this is uh, uh, very helpful for your long-term development. Thank you. Thank you, Simona. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ross, uh, how you also see this uh, topic and what are the tips that uh, you can share with us? So I, I try to resume uh, in very few words. <laughs> so I would say self-awareness and organization. Uh, so um, first of all, when you organize yourself, I have three kids um, traveling the whole time. Uh, they are already bigger. In different phases, you go organizing your family, partner, parents, brothers, uh, you know, hobbies, sports. You go organizing it so that you can feel rest or trust in, in the organization. So from that time to that time, and you know exactly what, what to do when. This gives me a peace. <laughs> Maybe other people, people are different, but for me, organization gives a lot of peace. You, you have your planning. I plan every day my priorities, also with the family, that we really are united, that we can listen to each other, and also that they know that they are priority. Like you do with your team, they have to know uh, by real, uh, real experience that they are priority. 
And when your kid is on the phone because there's an urgency, you take the phone. Even if you're in a meeting, you take it. Uh, if there's a the hospital, they have to know that you will be there, you know? And also for my team, um, I let them know that their life and their family and they as a person, their first are priority. But to know your priority, you have to be self-aware, which is very difficult. We are never 100% self-aware. We need to listen to others, how we are perceived, how we perceive ourselves, what gives us energy, what gives us meaning. It's very important to understand what is giving you meaning. And I'm kind of lucky that uh, adding value to person, uh, my, my passions are numbers and people, people and numbers. So uh, adding value to persons, making them grow is giving me a lot of energy. I actually never felt exhausted from work. And uh, for me, it's my passion. So I, I really do my passion every day. Um, I, I see people growing. This is giving me energy and I want to do more and more and more. So it's like, uh, it's like a car that drives and out of the driving, you're taking the energy and you can keep on driving, you know, like we do in mobility. But look what is giving you the energy, what is giving you the passion and also what is draining your energy because some situations will drain your energy. And like other people say, put boundaries on the part that are draining you and try to find out why it's draining your energy. Uh, because when we are not 100% ourselves in our authenticity, then it's draining our energy. So what, what, what is the bias there? How can we overcome that? So really try to, to feel yourself the whole time and be very self-aware, organize yourself. And again, sky is limit. You can do everything. Um, I'm active in sports, um, I'm uh, training talents uh, in my free time. I'm with my kids. They all have completely different hobbies. I'm there every time. We are very connected. Even though I'm traveling from Monday to Friday, I'm not even in my country. You just organize and make and you have a lot of support system. No, I have plan A, plan B, plan C, and plan D. <laughs> so I can really go with a trusted heart that, that everything is in order. And when there's an urgency, then I will make there that I'll be there. So, so this is my recommendation. Thank you, Ross, uh, so much. Uh, and uh, thank you all so much. Uh, the time flew um, with uh, so much speed. Uh, and uh, there are many takeaways uh, from, uh, from this event. Um, but I will uh, summarize by uh, saying that uh, what you said, that the sky is the limit. Uh, I was also very uh, inspired uh, by the fact that you shared your personal uh, experience and your personal um, advice, uh, your personal challenges as well, uh, because let's, let's face it, uh, there aren't only nice uh, things uh on uh, on uh, on the leadership uh, and on the woman being present at the workforce uh but what i'm uh, hearing uh, and i think we should be all proud uh, to to see that in romania we have strong uh, female uh, leaders uh, that are representing uh, the automotive uh, industry so i'm sure that uh, mirela whenever you want to have a regional uh, event uh we have lots of best practices uh, to to share. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for uh, for being us uh, today. Thank you so much, uh, ladies, for uh, for sharing uh, your your thoughts uh, with us. Uh, and I'm handing uh, now the mic uh, to Mirella uh, to say the final words of the event. Mirella, uh, I want just to thank you all of you for this inspiring uh, discussion. It was very interesting for for us. And uh, to invite you for the next uh, the diplomat and automotive uh, today events in our automotive uh, industry such as uh, R and D automotive power breakfast in June, a green mobility forum in October, and of course in November automotive forum and uh, and awards. But will be face to face meetings and uh, events. It, it's better uh, like this, but it was a short event, and we choose to to make it uh, online. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all, and have a nice Thank day. You. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.